future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. <laughs> And we all know that they're out there on the other side of this table, right? So they're all there, right, Kurt? It's my board up, Kurt. Everybody, welcome to What's Up with Cobelt and Hayes. Only getting Cobelt today and a really, really special guest host. Her name is Dale Raul. Did I say this right? (laughs) Raul. You said it perfectly. Perfectly. Okay, how many times will I know you? It's Raul. That's exactly correct. I am so yes. pleased to it's have you French, here with us so today. So it's like Raoul. But don't Raul. say that. Just say Raoul. Raoul. I'm so pleased to be here with Thank you. Thank you so it's much. It's my we second have visit. So many wonderful things to talk about. In particular, right now, you're working on an incredible play that's opening called Forever House. Yes, yes. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Um, and it's at the Skylight Theater, isn't that correct? Here in Los Angeles. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, for people who aren't in L.A. and they want to... They wanna, Take a look at this play. How can they, by the way? I'll go to the Skylight Theater website, and it'll give all the information and pictures and some interviews. So I think it's just uh, skylighttheater.net. Mm-hmm. Actually, skylight.com. So that'll do it. I love the topic of this play. But, you know, first, before you before we get into do a little digging about mm-hmm. you and the play and all the things you've done in your career, which is pretty massive. It's really incredible. Um we're actually going to have someone on the phone, which is kind of funny, because I like to do a couple of topics each show. Right. And this one, I love this. I don't even know if they're on the phone, Kurt, are they? Not yet. They Not wrote yet. a book, and it's called, Is Your Job Making You Fat? <laughs> and I love that, because as you look around around the country, anywhere you go, people tend to be so sedentary. And they're sitting there in their chairs. They're hardly moving. They're eating their food in their desks. And they're getting wider and wider as the months go by, don't you know? Well, I do know. And actually, I no, guess you if you, yeah, yeah. Because actually, if you ask me that question, the answer obviously would be yes. <laughs> but uh, I'm not very sedentary, actually. I just take after my mother, sadly. Look, I have to tell you, <laughs> I have been in a, a certain spot like that. Um, yeah. I know what you're talking about. because, But for me, it wasn't sitting behind a desk. It was driving kids around. Oh, I'm sure. And I like to say I'm driving up and down Sunset Boulevard, in which every drive and every year I just got a little wider and wider. (laughs) And um, after three kids and just almost filling up the seat, I decided to say, you know, I'm done with this. So I get it. So I think it's an interesting book that they wrote if they ever call in, I'm hoping, Misty. Well, and also you think about things are changing, that so many corporations have gyms in the buildings. Isn't that great? You know, have health programs, have exercise programs. I mean, it's really uh, a wonderful idea and um, big changes and we have Michelle Obama to thank for, for a lot of that. She's been terrific. Yeah, totally. She's been terrific. I mean, if we're going to switch a little bit, have you been watching what's been going on with the elections? Did you see the uh, last oh night? Oh my God. The other night, the uh, <laughs> town hall meeting. Did you watch that? <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I saw all the clips and everything. We're really interested in that. I mean, I love <sighs> watching what's happening. I'm curious the direction that the country's going to be going in. Yeah. I really am. I mean, I know we're not here to talk about that, but I'm just sort of prattling on until my guest calls in. But until then, why don't yes. you tell us a little bit about Forever House. Forever House. Tell us what it's about. I think it's very topical. Yeah, it is, actually. It's a new play written by Tony Abetamarco, who's a well-known Los Angeles theater person. And it's a play about a gay couple who have bought their first home together, their forever house. And it's they have purchased it in a suburb, sort of, of Alta, of uh, Los Angeles, kind of like Altadena or Sierra Madre. Which is kind of near, for people who don't know. Kind of uh, near Pasadena. Sort of near Pasadena, yeah. yeah. And it's a pretty conservative um, area, and they meet some challenges with their neighbors, and um, they also are trying to adopt a baby, and... Um, there's a lot of humor in this play and some spookiness because one of the guys, I play his mother, um, he thinks there's a ghost in the house. So some of the play is spent in figuring out what the hell that's about. Is there and, a ghost in the house? Well, I'm I mean, not going to tell you, can't you tell us. because okay. you're going to come to see I the am. show. I am. I cannot yeah. wait. Um, in fact, <laughs> I, our caller is on the line because I want to oh, get great, back to this great. and get back to your beginnings in theater okay. down in San Diego because I was reading yes. up a little bit about you. So. 
I Great. will talk about that. Okay, who do we have on the line? Hello. Aren't our people there? Hello. Hi, this is Stacy and Ken calling in. Hey, you guys. Thanks for calling. Where are you guys oh, calling right. in from? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm so glad to have you. I love your book. Incredible. Oh, well, thank you. Where, where are you guys calling you in are from? So where are... nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am actually very but <laughs> tell me a little bit about this book. Your book is called, Is Your Job Making You Fat? Isn't that correct? That's absolutely the title. And it really deals with the key factors at the workplace that today are causing people to gain weight. Okay, I have to say, I'm looking at your pictures. You guys, um, you're handsome. You're Be- adorable. Beautiful. They don't look like they've ever been fat. Do they, Dale? They're- no, I don't. Th- well, it's possible, but it doesn't look that way. I would know one when I saw one. Oh, no. But <laughs> I'm, what motivated you to write this book? Well, that's a great question. Uh, in, in the workplace today, you've got d- different generations. And they're experiencing work very differently. You've got the baby boomers, that's me, and then you've got millennials, and that's Stacy. Hi. And, <laughs> and Stacy's also my daughter. Okay. And, mm. uh, so we, yeah, so we, we had done this together because what we found was the one key factor that millennials and boomers seem to be sharing, that one shared experience is that there's a real tendency to gain weight. So we decided to ask one key question, is your job making you fat? And we found that the answer is yes. Okay, so what are people doing? How is it making people fatter, frankly, even more fat than they were 20 or 30 years ago when they were going to work? Sure, absolutely. Well, jobs today are far more sedentary. People are sitting basically between 65 and 75 percent of their time at work. So you're sitting, you're not moving. I would die. Another thing is job stress is at an all-time high. And the other thing is that people are working longer hours. They're dealing with peer pressure. There are new types of jobs where maybe they're working from home or they're working the night shift. They're just And if you look around today's workplaces, there's unhealthy food everywhere. So really when you put all these factors together, it's really creating this perfect storm for weight gain. You mean like those machines that you go to? I have to tell you, Dale. Um, uh, Dale is my co-host for today, as I refer to her, just so you know. She's a very esteemed actress out here in Los Angeles. So I have to tell you, I would always go to those little machines, and they have the little Mr. Somebody, the little chocolate chip cookies. And I'd I'd be so excited if two fell out at a time because I would eat them. So so bad. (laughs) But I get it. I mean, Yeah, and you're in front of the computer all day, all night, you know, on your phone, in the car. It's it's temptation and and you know badness is everywhere you turn. It's it's difficult, and I imagine because there is so much stress, people aren't getting up and walking around. Or and you're right. There's 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 even this whole issue of people dining at their desk, and that's a real scary right. proposition on a, on a lot of bases. I mean, number right. one, it leads to mindless eating. You're not thinking about really what you're doing in terms of eating. You're just throwing food in, maybe from that the vending machine you just talked about. So it's not going to be the healthiest, and you're, you're just taking it in. And furthermore, I'm going to let Stacey give you the scariest statistic <laughs> you're ever going to hear, and you probably won't eat at your desk again. Yes. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> what? Give it to me. I need, I need a good visual. <laughs> your desk contains 400 times the bacteria of a toilet. Oh, my God. So, so oh. when you're eating at your desk, just remember that. Ew. <laughs> I read that somewhere, and I'm thinking, how can this be? Well, how can your desk contain more bacteria than a toilet? It just... Well, you who know, did this study? It may <laughs> probably isn't cleaned as often, for one thing. Uh-huh. There's a point. You know, and, and people come by, they put their stuff on it, they put their hands on it, you're working, anything you bring in. I mean, did you did you come across, though, any of, you know, that, that new thing where people stand at their desks now? And to to not be so sedentary, I've I've read a lot about that. That people are standing yeah, that, while they're working. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we we see standing. more and more of mm-hmm. standing at work in a number of ways. You mentioned these standing mm-hmm. desks. You can get a stand up desk, which is fine. <laughs> there you go. There's also something. <laughs> yeah, there's something called a desk riser, which we think is even better. Basically, it's a desktop. You just put it on your desk. And when you want to stand up, click a couple of buttons on the side. Up goes your monitor. Up goes the printer. Up goes oh. all the items on your desk. So if you feel like sitting, you can sit. But if you want to stand, you can stand. And just the mere act of standing up, fidgeting around, all that's burning calories. Yeah, you so bet. It's a very healthy thing to do, and it's becoming 
very popular these days. I wouldn't really know. I'm not usually in an office. Are you? I mean, as an actress. Well, I'm at my desk quite a bit, I don't know, doing emails or, or uh, you know, nowadays we get all of our audition material on our computers. So you look at that. You might learn your lines off of a laptop or something. So I think, yeah, I, I am at my desk quite a bit. But at least you could probably move around if you have a laptop. Yeah, because I'm at home. You're at so home. So that helps, you know. Um, but it, that, that idea of having a desk that would get tall is very attractive. <laughs> and I, a desk that would get tall. As a kid, I remember um, I had a desk job for three days. It was the only desk job I ever had in my whole life. Uh-huh. I was in high school and I needed to make money and my... I don't know, you went to one of those tent places. Right. And it was to help some bookkeeper. And after three days, I said to my mom, I said, please, please, I don't ever want to go back. I, I can't sit here. <laughs> and then I went to work for a fast food place, which was, oh, you know, no. I know, I make one hush puppy and, and went the other one. Yeah. But, I mean, you really have to, <laughs> you really have to have a certain kind of personality to be able to sit there in the first place to even. Absolutely. Don't you think? That's, that's tough. No wonder why people are eating. And what about, (laughs) did you find uh, corporations that are implementing health programs and exercise programs and gyms? And that seems to be, you know, on the top of a lot of people's lists now. Yeah, that's one of the big trends today are wellness programs. And companies recognize, for a lot of reasons, it's a great idea to do it. Uh, Certainly, you want healthier employees. It's It's just ethically a nice thing to do to see if we can help our employees stay in better health. But frankly, there are business reasons as well. You get better productivity, better performance, maybe even less absenteeism and a break on your insurance. So from the corporate standpoint, there's there's interest on kind of on on all levels. And from the employee standpoint as well, there's a wellness program, a decreased uh, fee to get into the gym or maybe even pre-gym membership or meditation or classes or speakers or healthcare. Those are all good things. And the employees tend to take advantage of it, particularly if that's kind of the culture of the company. You know, we're a health-oriented company no matter what we make or do. And it, that kind of gets, if you will, contagious. Probably not the best word, but it's a good contagion to have. Yeah, exactly. Do you, do you guys do any speaking engagements? Yes, absolutely. We are available. <laughs> we, you know, come into places and uh, just sort of show people how they can really start to get active during the day. You don't, no one said you have to be sedentary. No one says that you have to be still. And no one said that you have to be eating all this unhealthy food. What, what we really teach people is how to use their business mindset and skill set and apply it to weight loss because these are skills that they already have. Mm-hmm. These are skills that you use every day on the job. You have priorities, objectives, benchmark dates, strategies. You have these tools already. So how can you really apply these tools to your weight loss. Okay, so give us a couple of couple of tips. I mean, some of them are pretty obvious. You know, pack your own celery and that kind of stuff. You know, walk around the, the desk, maybe take the stairs. But I don't know, sometimes people just get lazy and they need to be reminded, I'm guessing. You know, we kind of have a, an underlying question that you can ask yourself any time while you're working. And the question is, could I be standing? Uh-huh. Could I be working and really on my feet? Could I be walking right now? So you take something like meetings, you know, everyone goes in, you sit down, they get comfortable, and all of a sudden you get that same physical set as well as mindset. There's studies to show walking meetings are absolutely great, not only from the health standpoint, but in terms of burning calories and getting cardio, but getting more creative results. Wow. You said walking meetings? That's hmm. exactly right. The mob did that. They, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, they kept it moving. They hardly ever sat down, and so there's a good point. <laughs> did you did you uh, did you affect any change with something like that? Did you talk a, a company into taking walking meetings, or I mean, did people resist you, or what do you think? It's interesting. Yeah, I've, I've introduced this uh, in, in a number of ways, and certainly uh, in, in a company where I'm doing my my major work now, we've got stand up desks, we've got walking meetings, we've got stand up meetings, we've got gym membership, all of that, and it's interesting. The resistance is minimal. If mm. anything, the, the pressure, if you will, goes the other way. People get really interested in it. They start to feel better, and they start talking up amongst their friends. And it, it really helps the overall environment on, on every level, everything you're looking for in a workplace, motivation, morale, productivity, performance, all of those. Well, the truth is nobody really wants to be sick. Day. You know, a lot of people dread right. going to work. And I think if you would take so much of that away, you – 
you know, you the, people would be more interested in why I go to work as opposed to saying, oh, God, it's Monday, I don't want to go. If you knew that you had an opportunity to have a meeting as you're walking. Yeah, move around. Or there or... were some better snacks coming along the way. So, okay, you go into a business and you're trying to sort of overall it, overhaul it, rather. What's the first thing that you do? You sort of step in there and just see what people are eating or just see what they're doing during the day? Uh, well, one, uh, yes. And also just another main thing that we tell people is to wear a pedometer. Track your That's steps. That's a good one. That is so important right. because literally just wearing a pedometer, just the act of keeping track of your steps, you're more likely to increase your steps by 2,000. Just because all of a sudden you're monitoring and you're thinking, hey, maybe I can walk now and you're tracking it. Just that is enough inspiration to get people moving. You know what? That's a so, really good one. That is a great one because, as you've said earlier, it's it's pretty much all about mindfulness, and and tracking, mm -hmm. you know, falls into that category, and that's a that yeah. is a great idea. Um, okay, so what else? I think it's a good. I'm myself yeah. i used to have one of those nike bands mm -hmm. and then it broke and mm -hmm. i've been wanting to get myself a fitbit you know you, you mean something like that yeah exactly you know exactly. i don't have one yet see it just goes to show well, i think your phone will do it to your smartphone i think yeah, but maybe that's but kind of yeah. too big yeah. you know um so that's a good one what else i mean you know getting the junk out of the machines and all that i'm kind thinking of stuff. we should stand up and do this interview <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want? <laughs> that's a very good idea kurt could you st stick yeah. with us with the cameras i mean maybe we'll be on our bed <laughs> so uh, do we want that really? Actually, we I'm could not just sure. have a little treadmill underneath. That would be good just too. Just start moving and get yeah. the. Oh, what about music? How about music in the oh, workplace? Right. That would get me going because well, I love it, music. It's interesting. Music is is in the background, and if you're really concentrating and focusing, unless it's so overbearing that you can't even hear yourself think, it's not going to have a direct correlation to weight gain. Some will say, some research will say, you know, if you're playing faster music, people will work faster. Sometimes you go to a restaurant that's fast food, you might hear fast music because they want you to get in and get out of there. From our standpoint, we'd say, well, wait a minute, let's check out if we're going if we're going to that kind of restaurant, have I set a plan for it? What I'm going to order, what I'm going to eat, how am I going to stay under the exact kind of plan that safety was talking about? If you're at work, you've got the tools, you can you can do it. But the idea, in just big picture, is to be on the lookout for ways that I can keep myself moving and staying on plan, even even if you're sitting at a desk, okay? I'm going to say you don't have a stand-up desk, and you don't have a desk riser. You can still be moving. You can be fidgeting. You can literally be doing desk exercises, flexing your shoulder, moving your head from side to side, bouncing your legs, tapping your feet. All of that. Come on, now, Dale. Recent studies Come on. show fidgeting helps people lose weight. Yeah, I fidget exactly. a lot. I mean, I should be really mm -hmm, thin, mm -hmm. considering how much <laughs> that I fidget. So let's we'll do this with our heads, and we'll fidget a little bit. Okay. So then the fidgeting, I suppose. But basically, you got to put some good stuff in your body. I mean, you know, I think people have gotten so accustomed to sort of the. Fritos and all that kind of sure, stuff. Sure, it's everywhere. I mean, this know? is kind of obvious stuff, but but people just need to think about it. Is That's what you're right. saying? They really need to to put their minds to it. Well, it's like now they they want us to you know stretch and do exercises on planes. It's no different there because you're just again sitting for hours on end, and you know it can be kind of dangerous. But also, There's what no you're doubt, talking yeah. about is you know being being mindful of your physical self in your workplace is going to really help depression which then would if that's alleviated somewhat then you know the the productivity will be greater which would be wonderful for the company and then that would foster more activity how what's the percentage that's, what's the percentage uh, say, of, that's a great point cuz one of one of the ways to help deal with depression frankly is exercise yes and that's a lot of what you want to keep in mind am i taking advantage of these opportunities uh, to get a little more exercise while I am working. Because you're right, it's good for your physical health and your mental health. Right. I mean, the, frankly, also the employers have to care. They Exactly. But if they see the, it's affecting the bottom line, they will care. There's no doubt about right. it. That's right. what it amounts to. Um, so what are the, you must have some numbers, what are the percentage of people, what's the percentage of people who are expanding because they're too sedentary on the job? Do you have anything like that? Any sure. Numbers? Well, uh, a recent major workplace study found that 40% of employees gained weight on the job, so just right there, 41%. Mm. Then 59% gained over 10 pounds, and 30% gained over 20 pounds. Wow. So I would, I would this also. Is a real, this is a real issue that you know needs to be dealt with, and uh, really 
the answers are, are in our book. So do you have plans for another book or for any kind of other appearances? Or what, what are you guys thinking for your future? I, I think it, thinking of it, thinking big, what we would love to do is to get this whole concept of how you can control your weight and lose your weight at work into the psyche, into people's psyche, so that they can really realize, you know what, I don't have to just be a pinball here and go from one eating activity to another, the birthday party in the break room, the pile of donuts or bagels and, and all in the hallway, the candy bowl. I don't have to just be pushed around. I'm in charge of me. I might not have a manager title, but I'm the boss of me. We want to give people the tools wherever they are and whatever their job is to control this factor. It's going to help their performance, their productivity, their outlook, their mental outlook. You men mentioned depression. Their weight gain. We we really hope our goal is to get this into people's minds so that maybe we could get a handle on what what really is regarded as a disease by the AMA, and that's the overweight and obese problem that, that we see emanating in great part from people's jobs. There's no doubt about it. Um, finally, what companies are you working with? Have you been contacted by any of them? You know, just to kind of come in and overhaul what they're doing. Um, we, we've talked with a number. I, yeah, I'm just reluctant because sometimes they kind of like not to have it known that we're I got dealing you. with the first place way if it's okay with, with you. Oh, yeah. What uh, am I going to do? We, we do want to be <laughs> discreet about it. So that's really what, what it is. Well, what but, are some of the uh, better companies to work for, you think? That's a good question. Well, there are more progressive companies uh, today that are, play, you know, was, I, I don't really want to name names here, you know, but a lot of these companies, obviously, in Silicon Valley or Silicon yeah. Beach, which is out here, you know, are really actually putting an emphasis on employee wellness because they see the benefits, you know, galore that happen, not only with the person, but also, like you said, with their bottom line. So right. it's really a win-win for employers and employees. You know, it's interesting. When people go on a job interview, the interviewer will always say, well, what do you, have, what do you want to know about us? What questions do you have about us? This could be a, an, an interesting and informative question to ask. You say, I'm curious, uh, what are you folks doing in, in the area of employee wellness? It's a good thing to know, and it's something before going in. You know, if they say, employee what? That's one thing. Or if they say, oh, let me tell you, we've got this kind of gym membership. We've got an exercise program. And we've got a different... That's important to know. It tells you a lot about the company's values and interests and, frankly, their level of concern for the employees. I think that's great because, you know, if I walked in and asked that to someone, I would – I would I would think that I, I think it's a great question to ask. It just shows that they're they want to stay healthy. They don't just want to exactly, sit there and, and that they're concerned for their for their entire personhood. Anyway, Casey and Ken, thank you so so much for being here. Your book is your job making you fat, and it comes out what now February two thousand sixteen. Yes, February second. Although it's available now, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Indie Bound, the uh, you know major book retailers. Great, so, congratulations. Okay, and I'd like to hear a little bit back from you after your book is out, you know, um, if you've heard from any employees and people that have gotten back to you about how it's gone. Will you do that for us? Absolutely. Okay. We will definitely keep in touch, and we'd like to say for people to remember, the only thing that should be fat on your job is your paycheck. <laughs> a good one. That's a That's great one. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Have a great day. Okay, everybody, eat well. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 I need my applause. You can, you've been forgetting, like, my applause today. Thank you. That's like my little thing. Like that's my little buffer thing. But I am, um, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, goes without saying. But it is true. If you go into an office, you do notice that people are just sitting there. Sitting, yes. Sitting. And no one's, you know, another thing I forgot to mention. It's also, like I said, as a mom, a lot of times you're just sitting there driving all day. And that's another thing. Well, yeah, especially in Los Angeles. I mean, we are in our cars forever. And mm -hmm. you eat in your cars, which is never very good. And, you know, it's just a it's a it's a it's a minute by minute kind of battle. And so what they're talking about is really mindfulness, which is good in every department of your life. I know. Now I want to go out of here and have eat. some Cheetos. I was going to say, go eat a cheeseburger is what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, no. Anyway, let's talk about you. I am oh boy. so thrilled <laughs> to be here. We we went a little off topic when we were talking about your play. So you're the okay. mom yes. of um, your son is gay in the play and he yes. has a significant other. He, are they married or are uh, they not no, married? No, they're not married yet. Um, but I am sort of a critical mother 
Um, but I love my son. Um, I, I love this character so much. Uh, her name is Evelyn Grossman, and she's from Florida. And um, she, Evelyn Grossman Evelyn from Florida. Fl Evelyn, Evelyn Grossman from Florida. Florida. Yeah, I love the name. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. But the show we've we opened on Saturday, and we're getting wonderful reviews, and we're so grateful, and so thankful, and so thrilled. And um, our audiences have been really strong. And um, you know, people can find us on uh, at Skylight Theater on Facebook, and we're um, on Instagram at Skylight Theater. And at Twitter, it's at Skylight Theater. And um, we run Friday and Saturday at 8, uh, Friday at 8.30, Saturday at 8, and Sunday at 3. And uh, we're right in the Los Feliz neighborhood on Vermont. You know what I love about the play, what I read about it, I didn't see it yet, but I, I am going, that um, some of the neighbors are a little bit freaked out oh, because yeah. a gay couple moved next door. And it's just, to me, a very topical thing. Right. We live in L.A., and people in New York and Miami in certain areas are sort of a little more accustomed to having a gay couple move next door. But I think this is kind of an important thing for all people to say. One reviewer said, this is a must-see for all open-minded people, and go take somebody who's not so open-minded. <laughs> exactly. You know, they're just your neighbors, just like anybody yeah. else. Well, and, and again, this play, the, the, the Forever House is located in a suburb of Los Angeles where, you know, if this couple is buying a house in Silver Lake or Venice or something. Which are more progressive for neighborhoods in Los Angeles. A little bit more Angeles, progressive, yeah. and this, where they moved in is kind of an upscale uh, place, and they're, they're experiencing some resistance and, um, you know, it's done in a comical way, but it also makes a point. And uh, we just think that, it, you know, it's a subject that people sort of think is all solved and taken care of. It's not. It's not. It's I am really not. a proponent of gay, gay rights just because of a lot of um, a lot of family members that I know have been really have really struggled with Absolutely. so many issues, and it's it's one of my main uh, one of my main focuses. In fact, in fact, both of us yes were part of a campaign called No Hate. That's Do we right. have those pictures? Oh, I hope so. Oh, look how gorgeous your picture is, and your adorable dog. That's and there's my mine. dog Louie. Yours is great too. Look at you with your microphone. Well, yeah, and they put <laughs> with the microphone. I showed that picture to friends of mine, and they said, "Oh, Deborah, finally you're shutting up." Ah. I mean, they they just love that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's no hate. And basically, uh, the photographer and his partner started this campaign some years ago yeah. for that very reason. You know, for awareness. For no and hate and awareness. And I think that's that's just terrific. And the, the, the no hate campaign has gone all over the country. Thousands and thousands of people have had their pictures taken, even senators and all kinds of people. So oh, it's everyone. Very cool. I, I was yeah. so – I felt really pleased and honored to be a part of that. Yeah. I really was. So um, – so, all right, so that's a terrific play. Now, a little yes. bit into your background, because I, you oh. know, I'm my heart pounds a little just even sitting next to you, because oh, you have been <laughs> in so many wonderful uh, uh, shows, basically, well, and films, you, Deb. but we'll get to each one. But one, you started your career down in San Diego, the I Old did. Globe Theater? Yes, I was at the Old Globe in San Diego, the Shakespeare Festival, and it was very, very exciting, and, and um, it was my first professional job, and I was just, you know, over the moon about it. Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, Taming of the Shrew, and Hamlet, and a play that isn't done too often called Timon of Athens. It's one of Shakespeare's, I guess, lesser known. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, I played, this was a long time ago, I played like a, a prostitute or something. I kind of can't remember. Oh, I love it. What were you in Taming of the Shrew? I, I did Taming of the Shrew. Oh, well, I was, in this production, I was Mistress Sly, which which is a character that opens and closes the shows, the show. And um, we, I'm trying to think, we had a... Um, Mr. Sly, oh yeah. yeah. Because when I did it, I was Bianca, uh -huh. the sweet I one. I can see that. But wait, but wait. I did it the next year, and they put me in as the shrew. So ah. my, my family always <laughs> says, you know, I'm not sure which one you are. Are you the shrew or are you the sweet one, Bianca? And but it seems that that's because you're versatile. You're a versatile actress. Oh, I'm hardly know. an actress, but it depends on the day you get me. You know that's what I right. Mean? Exactly. So that was sort of the beginning of my and the end of my acting career. So it just goes to show you how good I was. I think you would be a good actress. <laughs> I do. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. It's okay. Not too late. So then you came up to Los well, Angeles. Yeah. Th actually, then I went to New York. I spent about a year in New York, and then I I came out to Los Angeles, and I got married, and I started working um, in TV and film, and and uh, I did a lot more plays and things. Um, Anyway, you know, fast forward, I did a lot of television shows, movies, um, 
I got a nice break when I did Six Feet Under with Alan Ball. Okay, we all know. Yeah, your Thank favorite you. show. One of my mm-hmm. favorites. And frankly, mm-hmm. you've been in a lot of my favorites, my dear. Oh. Quite a few of them. Six Feet Under was a particular favorite. I thought it was so brilliantly yeah. written. The characters were spot on. The actors were oh, They were, were amazing. Perfection. I amazing. loved them, and I was devastated when that went off the air. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to do with myself. Well, fortunately, Alan Ball then, you know, uh, created True Blood, and um, we did that show for seven years. I had a wonderfully fun character, and the writers on that show were awesome. I loved your character. Thank you. Was that fun to play? It was super fun. I played a horrible, nasty... <laughs> Bigoted, meddling, meddling, you know, uh, nosy mother, know-it-all neighbor yeah. sort of mother, yeah. right? Just in everybody's was, business. Yeah, it was really fun. What a fun! That is yeah. a fun one to play. It was great. And um, how do you draw from stuff like that? I mean, you know, you go from, you know, you were also in Friends. You've been in so many different shows that people would know of. I mean, everything well, from The Office. You've done something Friends, Six Feet Under, of course, uh, Under the Dome, right? Was that the oh, CBS? Oh yeah, I did a, a couple seasons of Under the Dome. We shot that in Wilmington, North Carolina. So Fun. I went back there, you know, quite a few times. And and uh, other than being super hot down there, it was fun a fun show to work on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a, what was and on Friends? You were the tenant. I played a Dutch woman, and um, oh, I love this. Yeah, it was it was difficult because I had to speak Dutch, which of course I don't. They had a coach for me, but unless you kind of get a run on what you're going to say, it it, it 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 sticks in your head and it doesn't come out of your out of your mouth. So um, I was just glad when that was when that was done. It was really fun. They were wonderful to me, and but um, speaking Dutch is not. Easy. How do you speak Dutch? I have no idea. It's been, I can't remember. Because I guess what I'm getting at, if you've done so much in your career, like like all really esteemed actresses. Um, well, thank you, my goodness. Um, I'm, I consider myself fortunate to be a character actress, to be of a certain age, and to still be able to work. In our profession, that's not always the case for many, many talented people. So I feel really lucky. And um, the business has changed a lot. Uh, there really, there's a lot more work, but a lot of it doesn't pay very much. The cable, internet, whatever. So I but think it it's, keeps you in the game. At least keeps you in the game. But I think it's hard these days for young actors starting out because really they, well because in the old days we were paid more and we were paid more for commercials. And, you know, things have changed. Mm. So we wish everybody well. Have you ever had a favorite moment or favorite time in your career that you want to share about? Oh, gosh. I I must say I think working on on True Blood was was my special favorite. Just because I was there for a long time and I got to know the other actors and the crew. And that makes you feel comfortable. And um, they also write, you know, they write for your voice. And that's helpful. Um, and sometimes when you go on a, you know, on a TV show as a guest spot, you don't know where the coffee is. You don't know where the bathroom is. You feel kind of like a guest at a party where you don't know anybody. So that's kind of unsettling. And part of your job is to keep your confidence going. So it's really nice to work on a job where you um, know people. So you are married to, you've been married, this is a rare one as well, since 1986 I have. We have our to your husband. Year, yes, my husband, Ray Thompson. Very, I still like him. We're very fortunate there. And he has won <laughs> six, he's a six time. Seven, actually. Seven. Yes. Oops. That's all right. I read six, but we're up to seven time Emmy Award winning uh, lighting designer. Yes. Uh, Young and the Restless. That's right. That's yes. also pretty incredible. Yes, it is, actually. He's, oh, he's adorable. Uh, Look at you, he's too. He's very, he's a, he's a lovely guy, and he still likes his job and uh he's been at cbs you know over 30 years and um he you know maybe in the next few years he'll retire but but i don't know he still enjoys it even though the hours are not great and he has to get up every day at five have you worked together um we have worked together on uh plays and i don't think we've ever done anything on camera together um, he does help me sometimes with auditions that I have to put on tape. And then, of course, they're very well lit. But then he reads, <laughs> Lighting is everything. Yeah, lighting is everything. Isn't it? I mean, before yes, we even exactly. went on today, I said, please make sure that we're a little brighter or a right. little lighter. Um, there's no doubt about it. Lighting is yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, my son actually is at Emerson uh, College, and he loves lighting. He's, oh, that's He's yeah. just so intense with it. So it's a lot bigger, a lot more important job than people realize. Oh, completely. It's everything. I mean, once if Kurt were to turn all the lights off, we'd be done. We'd be cooked, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't look no, quite, as, lighting. Am quite those, as amazing as we do here. Those right soap now. stars, I mean, they, you know, they, uh, they really re rely on lighting. And, and movie stars, too, my gosh. You know, so... Uh. Any like really crazy moment? Have you ever worked with someone? You don't have to name anybody mm. unless you want to. Mm. Um, who was just kind of insane, and you just couldn't wait to get get the hell out of there that day? Did you ever have just a really well? I have had, moment? and I don't want to say I don't want to say names because that's not no very names. professional. But you know, people who wouldn't um, speak to you, um, you know, until you got on set, and then they would say their lines, but they never would say hello or look you in the eye. And oh, and occasionally you'd you'd come across a star. And the the assistant director or someone would say, "Now, don't look at them. Don't look. Don't look them in the eye because it makes them uncomfortable. So um, just keep that in mind that they don't want anyone paying attention to them." It's like, okay. You know what? Though I've met some of those folks, mm -hmm. and I and then I've since maybe gotten to know one or two, and I thought maybe that's just their way of staying focused and staying in their in their yeah, zone you think maybe but sometimes what they're working on is not it's not like shakespeare or they're not doing I rocket gotcha. science you know? they're just kind of being a prima donna pain <laughs> in yeah, the ass pretty much yeah stuff like that happens but as you get older it's like oh whatever whatever it's whatever. like okay i won't look at them i won't yeah. spill my oh coffee my on God. their shoes yeah exactly um, I'm not here. I'm just here to serve you, whatever. Exactly. I, I won't speak. I right. give you my word. Then I'll just go home. Do you have a super favorite moment or two or three you can share with us? I mean, obviously, True oh, Blood. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Well, yes. Uh, this, I mean, um, I did this movie called Out to Sea uh, some years back, and we were on a cruise ship in the Caribbean shooting, which was really cool. Okay, I would have liked that. Yeah, just write that, that in there. Swell, that would have been my favorite. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it was with Jack Lemmon and Walter oh. Matthau. Oh, come and on. And they are, were, they're gone now, sadly, but they, of course, were gods of, you know, our business. They could not have been kinder or sweeter or more thoughtful or more giving. And I because just, oh, yeah. They're at the top of their game and oh, they yeah. have nothing else but they nothing. and they give yeah that's another thing i find if they're really at the top of yes. their game they're giving it right back i mean for the jack lemon particularly he was just so kind and so thoughtful and you know people were just in awe of him and he really put that to rest and made you feel very at ease and that was super cool Wow, yeah. were they like funny on set? Yeah, I mean, especially like, what would they Walter do? Mathau. Really? Well, Walter. I Mathau. know his son. He's a oh, really nice yeah. guy. Yeah. I mean, he was just funny all the time. But Jack Lemon, he brought. He had a poodle, a big. I think uh, I can't. <laughs> he remember. brought his poodle. He brought on his board? poodle. We were shoot. No, actually, we were shooting here in Los Angeles for a time. And we were um, shooting a big ballroom scene, and so the poodle would come every day to work, and the poodle would sit under one of the tables, and um, occasionally they'd have to stop shooting because the poodle would be eating the food. That was <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was Jack Lemmon's poodle, so. Mm. So everyone was yeah, like, cool, exactly. with Jack Lemmon's poodle. Oh, that, exactly. That's great. Now, last year you went to Sundance, right, yes. for the bronze? Yes, yes. Speaking of film. Yes, yes. How was that? It was fabulous. I'd never been to Sundance, and the cool thing was uh, this movie's called The Bronze, it's written by Melissa Rausch and her husband Winston, and stars Melissa Rausch. She's um, she plays Bernadette on The Big Bang Theory, and the film um, fun picture. Yeah, she is just the best girl ever. The film was the opening night selection of Sundance, so it was very exciting, and it's going to open. I believe it's March 18th, so we have it coming very soon. She plays a washed up gymnast. And um, it's going to be... Uh, what do you do when you're a washed-up gymnast? Well, you go home to this little teeny town, and um, you eat Cheetos and become incredibly obnoxious. Oh, no, another one? Oh, yeah. she becomes it. But what did you play? I played uh, the woman, I think my name was Doris, who owns the diner in the teeny town. Who and gives I, her all the food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm her biggest fan. I think she's the most famous, well, of course, she's the most famous person I have ever met. So I am just in awe of her, and she kind of abuses me. 
Um, oh. But Melissa actually was on True Blood with me, and so that's how we met. So I was very happy to be able to be in her film. Does that happen a lot? Like you just you you cross over, like with Alan Ball. I mean, you just sort of work with somebody, and then you're top of mind. I yeah, or you you know you might work with them, and then one day you might be auditioning for that same director, and it'd be like, oh hi hi hi, and that does give you a leg up if you did a good job on the last. I was going to say if you yeah, did a good yeah, job, exactly. otherwise like oops, it can go another way. Yeah. Right. So I have to remember that you know with all these auditions. That I've been going on, you know, eventually one of them will happen. So, yeah. um, and then, okay, you starred in the comedic short film um, Open 24 Hours. Yeah, yeah, we've done um, a, a young filmmaker a, a company, young filmmaking company called Slater Hall, uh, uh, wrote and produced this film called Open 24 Hours. And it takes place in a um, convenience store. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's a short, it's short right? It's a short. We, I, I mean, not, I mean, I, I am tooting my own horn and their horn. We have won so many short film awards over this last six, eight months. It went to the Cannes Film Festival. I mean, it has played like 20, 30 festivals, and, and it's still on that circuit. So it's really fabulous, especially for them, because it's really and put you, their company on the map. And you star in this, correct? I do, actually. It was very fun. We shot it up in... Um, Oh, I've forgotten where. Oh, gosh. In a convenience store? In a convenience store, Wrightwood, up in the mountains. Oh. Yeah, it was really super cold, and we shot from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. because that's when the store was closed. And um, we were up there a couple so of days. So you were completely upside down. It's yeah. like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. That was the glamorous part of showbiz. Yeah. yeah. So you shot the, that's So how long did it take to shoot this I film? I think we were there three days. Oh, it yeah. really was a short. It was how, short. how long is the film? Um, About, oh, gosh, under 10 minutes, I think. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And so you've got that going on. I yeah. Mean, that's pretty distinguished between your TV. Well, you've got a play that's currently um, running. Yes, for You've got the House. film. I'm really looking forward to The Bronze. I think that's yeah, going to be terrific. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's a really raunchy comedy. It really is. The Bronze? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. How can people, though, I mean, it's probably not going to be in, you know, released in all theaters. But Oh, I think it will be. It is. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to, it's, you know, it's going to get a big release on March 18th. Yeah, it's going to be a nice big film. And um, Melissa, um, well, you know, there's a there's a sex scene in this movie uh, between Melissa and this other gymnast. And because they're gymnasts, you can kind of, you know, let your mind wander well, there you go. with that. There's a reason to and just go and see it. It's Kurt. unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Kurt's going to turn red again. <laughs> I do this to him every time. Now watch. Watch him turn red. My, I love him. I it's, see you. He's a, <laughs> there he goes. So... <laughs> Um, so what else have you got going on between you and the husband oh. who's, who's busy in this long-term well, marriage? Oh. Any travel? Any other plans going on? Yeah, we're going to go on a cruise this summer to Greece, and we're going to go with a bunch of friends and celebrating our 30th anniversary, so we're doing that. Um, oh, I don't know what else. I'm working on a fundraiser for an arts organization in Orange County. What's that? Um, it's, um, that. it's an organization that benefits uh, California State University Fullerton, and oh. a friend of ours is is producing it. And so Ray and I, Ray was an actor in college, so we've been asked to read some poetry that um, one of the, the members wrote. And so um, we have a rehearsal for that next uh, next Monday, and I think we do it the 6th of February. Oh, so that's exciting. Ray's very excited to, you know, put on his acting hat. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. You know, for once, he comes from the other side of the light. Exactly. He gets to the other side of the light. Exactly. What do you like to do in your off time? Do you have off time? Oh, yeah, often? we definitely do. Um, we're big moviegoers. We use mm -hmm. it sort of as therapy. Um, you know, as you know, in our business, you can go to a lot of screenings for free, and, and we get a lot of... Um, movie sent to us because of the award season, but we really like to go and sit in the theater and just relax and kind of let the world drift away. So we do that. Um, we go to a lot of concerts and. Oh, what know, do you like? What kind of music? Well, Ray really likes classical music. And aren't you so, involved with the uh, with the opera? Well, yeah, we do. Um, we do. I'm getting a note past you from uh -oh, your publicist what here. Is it? Uh oh! He oh, wants oh, you, want you to mention yes, him. He's yes, Riley. He's, is that what you want? <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> yes, he wants me to mention these web, he's turning the web red too. series. No, he's not. I think he's fine over no, there. He's, he's, he knows I'm he's messing with him. All. <laughs> yes, uh, he wants me. I do. I've been working on a web series um, uh, called Avenue Forty Three, which takes place uh, on Avenue Forty Three in Highland Park, which is a section of Los Angeles. What's it about? And it's about these crazy wackos who live in Highland Park. And so, uh, you know, they're artists, they're devil 
devil worshipers, they're <laughs> crazed killers. You know, it, it encompasses a lot of things. I've been doing that for a couple of years. So, oh, I, I really want to see this. Yeah. Tell me the name again. <laughs> Avenue Forty Three. Avenue Forty Three, yeah. and you just find it. Yeah, yeah, you can go on YouTube and find it. So, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's really fun. And uh, so I don't know, it, you know, the the older I get, the the busier I seem to get, which is wonderful. I'm not complaining. Well, you're so versatile. I mean, you can well, be a friend, you. you can be a mom, you can yeah. be now I can be a grandma. Well, okay, so can I, for that matter. I mean, you know, so we can be, you can be almost anything. Right. So I guess that's why. I mean, yeah. you you're growing into the role of an actress. Look at it. That exactly, way. exactly. So no, I feel very lucky. Very but lucky. with all these. Different different roles do you have a special way of preparing for anything or um Mm. oh gosh I I mean first of all I always rely first most heavily on the script Mm -hmm. and um I do you know I read the script and read the script and read the script and figure out what they say about me and then I look and figure out what they say about you know what other characters say about me and then you know then I kind of figure out how do I relate to the character? What qualities in me relate to that particular character? And I kind of try to illuminate those. And then I look also for humor, always. Um, and then kind of figure out, you know, more exterior life for the character as far as how this character might look or dress. You know, what kind of house would they live in? That kind of thing. Just mm. imagination a lot. But knowing a few actors and having seen some of your work, mm-hmm. I love how people put a little bit of their personality into every yeah. role. I love to see that. Regardless of what you're playing, right. a little bit of Dale is always in there, wouldn't you say? Yeah, now that a lot of times you can't, you know, you really can't help that. So if if something, you know, really uh, triggers you with that character, it's good to highlight that because then it'll be more authentic. Mm-hmm. So after the play, after Forever House, after Forever here House, here at the Skylight Theater in Los Angeles, yes. until February twenty eighth, yes. So please go see it. Please, please, I'm really join excited, us. and I can't yes. wait. What do you have after? Any work coming up after that, or uh, right now? The answer would be no, not that I'm aware of. Um, which is actually okay. Yeah. Well, for someone <laughs> something like you, will because happen. you know something will happen. Yes. You know, you're not starting out in your career where you're so anxious and wondering, no, oh, no, 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 I have nothing, but you know that something will be coming up. Thank God I do have faith that that could be the case. <laughs> the award season's coming up. You mentioned that. Yeah. Any mm-hmm. predictions? Best film, best actor, best I actress? I think it'll probably be, um, oh gosh, uh, uh, it'll probably be The Revenant, probably be Leonardo DiCaprio. I think it'll be Brie Larson from Room. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, what did you think of Leonardo's performance in that? I thought he was wonderful. I thought the film was an incredible accomplishment. I didn't really get into it. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't, I just, you know, I just kept thinking about what a nightmare it would have been to shoot it because mm-hmm. it was so freaking cold. Mm-hmm. I know but some of the people involved in that film really? and yeah. they said it was unbelievable really difficult yeah i like the martian i, I love that. the martian i'm not saying that that should or no would win, no no but i, I loved, loved it. it and you know that's a tough movie oh to my film. gosh i can't imagine because i actually think the filmmakers um kept it interesting because yeah it, it could have gone the other way where you're like all right already grow yeah. your vegetables and potatoes already i, I right. get it but they kept it Ooh. very very moving and interesting i oh, really loved I just, it i just loved it loved yeah it, and loved i kept it. feeling like it was based on a true story and i'm like but but what really happens and i thought no no no, no it's no, not no, it's made up it's yeah. made up i mean it really felt terrific and then um oh gosh what's the other one that everyone talks about uh, uh the big short a big short was great 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 in my mind, mm. it was just kind of okay. Oh, okay. Maybe I was tired that night. It seemed like it went on forever and ever and ever. Mm, um, I don't know. But I, everyone loves that one, too. Yeah, everyone loves that one, too. Christian and, Bale, and, they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's super. And there was a, the other one, um, a Big Short. Anybody want to chime in here? Uh, the two of us can't oh, remember. Oh, well, there's, <laughs> there's um, Carol. The, the, with Kate Blanchett. Oh, yeah. That's oh, she's beautiful. marvelous. Whoa, whoa, baby. She is really terrific. She's yeah. a really esteemed actress. I love watching her yeah. stuff, too. Yeah. So we'll see if your prediction. We'll see. We we'll will see. see. I will, we'll, I'll be calling you okay. if he wins. So um, it was so Excellent. nice to chat with you so again. So nice to see you. And I hope Thank I can maybe you. go backstage and see you after well, yeah, the play. Well, yeah, I hope so. We'll go have a cocktail. Yeah, that to me is a really big deal. I, I really enjoy oh theater. I grew up yeah. uh, in the theater. My parents... Um, we're not actors or actresses, but they volunteered their services all the time. That's wonderful. You know, the Oslo Theater down yeah. in Florida, they work down there. Oh, wow. They loved it. And um, so it's sort of in my blood. You, uh, so I look forward it. to it. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Thank you so Annie. much for being here and helping me out and being my co-host today on What's Up. Congratulations.
And another really fun, great addition, everybody. Thanks for uh, helping me put this together, and we'll see you next week on What's Up with Cobalt and Hayes.